First, make sure you take care of any safety precautions in accordance with your company's requirements. This includes, but is not limited to, lockouts, tagouts, and personal protective equipment. We also recommend wearing gloves as there are several pinch points on this mixer. To begin, remove the side covers and then remove the back belt cover. Once your safety covers have been removed, you'll have full access to the belt driven system. For this video, the auto and manual swivel is disconnected, so there's more room for you to see the installation process. Lower and reduce the height of the motor to reduce the tension on the belt. I recommend only loosening the top nut on the adjustment bolts, and the bottom nut can remain in place, allowing you to easily reset the belt tension later. Loosen the same nuts on the opposite side of the mixer. You'll know you have the motor dropped down low enough when you can safely remove the belt off the rear of the mixer. Next we'll remove the bottom sprocket assembly from the mixer. This process may be different depending on the style you have. Refer to your unit's installation and operations manual for specific information. This is a Goodyear Eagle NRG sprocket with a QD taper lock bushing. It has a set screw that goes over the top of the key. Loosen the set screw and back it out far enough so you don't drag it along the key when removing the sprocket. Measure and note the distance from the face of the taper bushing to the end of the shaft. You may need help of a second person as the sprocket can be very heavy. Use the jacking bolts to release the taper and remove the taper bushing and sprocket. Put the sprocket and taper bushing aside. Remove the key and then remove the snap ring off the back of the mixer. Next, we're gonna lock out the mixer. The shaft moved forward into a metal to metal taper shutoff. Loosen the set screws and lock nuts. Note that there are three set screws on the inboard bearing assembly and three set screws on the outboard bearing assembly. First, you loosen the nuts and you can rotate the shaft by hand to make this a little bit easier. Now loosen the set screws. The set screws should be backed out about a turn and a half so they clear the shaft and any areas of the shaft. When the set screws are loose, set the key away in the back so it faces down. Next install the setting tabs and loosen the clamp collar on the mechanical seal. Some of our mechanical seal setting tabs work differently from this. Determine what setting tabs and locking device your seal has. This one happens to be a Philadelphia Mixing Solution standard mechanical seal. The setting tabs are little bobbins. Loosen the bobbin and roll it into location. Once the setting tabs are locked into place, unlock the mechanical seal sleeve to the shaft. In this case, this is done with a clamp collar. Then loosen the clamp collar. And in some seals, this is done with set screws and you'll have to move around the shaft to loosen all the set screws but only after your setting tabs are in place. On models with a clamp collar, you know it's loose when you can move the clamp collar slightly. Make sure the check valve works by opening the check valve. Some liquid should come out and then you can close the check valve. This procedure works best with two people. To lock out the mixer, First, slightly loosen up the L99 bolts. Once they're loosened, back out the U75 bolts until the tips are still engaged in the shutoff housing. Start tightening down the L99 bolts. As the bolts are tightened, the shaft will move through the bearing and sleeve. A gap will begin to occur on the rear bearing between the snap ring and the outboard bearing sleeve. If you encounter any issues, for example, if the bolts jam up or if something isn't moving, reevaluate and ensure the set screws are loose, the snap ring is removed from the rear of the mixer, and there are no issues with the mechanical seal. When all four L99 bolts are tightened down, Make sure the mechanical seal on the mixer has been locked out and that no product will leak as you proceed. 
It is normal for some liquid to come out when you first open the check valve, but after it stops and no more liquid comes out, the shutoff has been successful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us here at the factory or to your local sales rep, and we'll be happy to support you in any way possible. Thank you very much.